I remember learning about the Erie Canal back in school and being so bored. I remember thinking, if I only lived somewhere else, I could be learning about something cool. What I later realized is that the Erie Canal is incredibly important, and it's taught across the country. And it all started where I was, in Rome, New York. What I didn't know is where it was finished, in a particularly difficult section in western New York. There was this 60-foot natural drop called the Niagara Escarpment, and somehow the canal had to go up it. Making this happen was an incredible achievement, not only for the canal, but for the entire country. And it was only possible because of the ingenious engineering feat known as the Flight of Five. To give you some context, a lock during this time was incredible technology. Five locks is incredible technology times five. This all just gives you an idea of what the place called Lockport is all about innovation. And the flight of five was only the beginning. There's a whole bunch of firsts in this small canal city. I suppose that's why we look at places like this in this local New York history series. Not just to learn, but also to be inspired by the past. Obviously, in this video I'm not going to be able to encapsulate all the people, houses, streets, institutions, developments, and so on about Lockport. But what I'm going to try and do is capture what makes it so special. And you could say that it all began in 1817, when the New York State Legislature authorized the construction of the Erie Canal. And they saved the best for last. It's a good thing too, because if they decided to start the Erie Canal in the Lockport area, the whole project might have collapsed for being so discouraging. And it wasn't long before they began preparations for construction of the five lock system. What made this system unique is that unlike other locks that used a single chamber, the flight of five consisted of multiple chambers connected in a sequence. I can't even imagine the sheer scale of the construction work happening in Lockport and all of the logistical challenges it brought. There was no electricity, there wasn't even TNT, just shovels and a good spirit. And they got it done in about three years, of course being a monumental achievement. After their work was done and the canal completed, the spirit of innovation that they used to come up with the Flight of Five was still in the air. All of the excess water coming from the locks was harnessed into hydropower, becoming a crucial energy source for numerous mills and factories. And with all that water available, firefighting was another natural field to evolve. People like Birdsell Hawley made contributions to fire safety and heating technology that not only benefited Lockport, but also had a lasting impact across the country. And speaking of those who broke the mold, Belva Lockwood is another important member of the settlement. After teaching there for a few years, she went on to become one of the first female lawyers in the U.S. She was also the first woman to run for president in both 1884 and 1888. That's before women could even vote. It makes sense that she was a teacher out of Lockport because, as with other areas, Lockport played a pivotal role in early public school systems thanks to the visionary efforts of people like Sullivan Caverno who had this crazy vision of free and accessible education for all. Lockport's initiation of such a school system showcases its forward-thinking approach to pretty much anything. Take aluminum. The world's first commercial smelting of aluminum was right here in Lockport. Lockport was also the first place in the world to use automatic voting machines back in 1892 but we have to remember that it's about the people. You don't have innovation without innovators. People like Herbert Harrison, who invented the honeycomb radiator in the early 1900s for cooling early automobiles. Even with all this innovation, 
the decline of the Erie Canal also meant the decline of many places. Nothing could stop the coming of the train and, of course, the automobile. But even with that, Lockport has continued to do a great job in keeping up with the times. And today, Lockport stands as a city deeply rooted in its historical past. And rightfully so. But it's also one that embraces the future. I'm hoping to make it over there myself sometime and check out one of their historical tours. And maybe I'll do so at the Bicentennial, which is coming up soon. I guess that makes it a date. In good old Lock City. Have a good one. Thanks for watching this video today. You know, there's one thing that I never got bored about in school, and that is the Black River Canal, which we're gonna be looking at in the next video.